I'm curious to see how well Wyvern does, because I'm like three times so far in this patch, and the game says he felt effective. Well, wouldn't be Dota without pauses. A uh, quick one as art style needs to get water or go pee, or I don't know, something will take I would say at best it's even for like if he plays well and Clock has the higher chance of winning the lane. And then your tri lane, you already mentioned the disruption into Shadow Wave. That's insane. Combined with the, the Lashrak okay, in a well, farming role, which he should go, be in, go, 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 they can kill, beat, kill, kill, they kill, can kill, at kill, least kill. potentially beat this Navi tri lane. So. I don't know. I'm a little worried for Navi, and I feel like maybe they want to try and Back dodge, the put the Nyx bottom, gibberish. rotate the gyro into a, an offensive tri-lane, but really just to dodge the, the Vega tri-lane that could be headed their way. We'll, we'll see. For now, that Shadow Demon, though, he's he's heading towards bottom, but he's not going with the Lashrak. Looks like Lashrak may be going top in the end, so perhaps they will decide to back down. I really feel like they should be going aggressive here, though. Navi going to roll out his five, looking to protect their own jungle. There will be three headed down that way. At least initially from Vega. And I don't think we're going to see anyone getting too adventurous here. Probably just setting up to try to get into position for the rune. Maybe maybe it's a clock aggressive Charlie. This was something that, uh, oh, you know who it was? LGD International did this. You mentioned G League. Oh, yeah. This was during G League. They I would remember that. You disrupt, you get the clock on top of them, you cog, and then you shadow wave. So it's like you get the shadow wave bomb, and they can't leave after that. So you're just smacking them the whole time. Yep. Okay, so then they're doing aggressive Charlie. Lashrak going off lane. Seconds. Probably 1v1 against Nyx, unless Navi try to dodge this. Yeah, this could be very interesting. Uh, I, if they get that, either either try lane, as long as they go aggressive and get the matchup, I think Vega come out on top here. About 15 seconds in the horn blowing, and still waiting to see exactly how these lanes are going to shape up. A lot of options on both sides. And I actually, if they end up going aggressive and Navi does not dodge, I'm really favoring Vega and so it begins. Uh, here early on. And so far, it doesn't look to be the case, though I doubt they've completely spawned this quite yet. <laughs> Bounty Rune's picked up by the Shadow Fiend and the Gyro. Well, Art Style. Oh, he's expecting the offlane Clockwork. I think he wants, to eat, the, he wants to eat the tree so that Clockwork can't just cog the creeps the in. But little did he know, there's two heroes here, Aaron. Oh, what a disaster off the bat for Art Style. Well, Art Style once again. Takes an unfortunate death. That is a, that that's I, I think he's thinking. Okay, someone's going to be back blocking the creep wave. Yep. Clockwork's probably just about to cog the creeps in, so I'm just going to go and eat that tree right over uh, right over here, so that you can't just keep them locked back in the passageway. But <laughs> wasn't the case, man. He pays. Navi is adjusting their lanes, at least it seems. Uh, Art Style will be making his way back down to bottom. It seems both teams are. Yeah. Right? In the end, they're, they're seeing just a gyrocopter bottom, and after the first blood, uh, they're very confident that Mag will get a lot out of the offlane without needing any support. Yep. They're going to try to zone him out a little bit, so it will be dual lanes, um, at least a little bit. Dindy right now is getting some help from Suneko, and he's actually got no one quite low, but only so much going to be accomplished there, just trying to secure Dindy that early farm. And really, that's going to make or break him. I mean, like you said, left alone, this should be a, a solid win for the Shadow Fiend. It is a Shadow Fiend on the Dire side instead of Radiant, so not going to be as effective in terms of farming the jungle just by shutting the wave. But what do you think of Seneco spending most of his time even though he is Sapphire's next It's like you said, you definitely need this support early on as a, as a, as a Magnus in this matchup. And Dendi is taking full advantage of it. Already 7 and 5. Wyvern, one of the better zoning supports of the early levels, I would say. Arctic Burn does just, it just allows you to get a lot of extra harassing and makes life a bit harder. Is that, is that a, one of the new Immortals, that ridiculous hammer that he's got? Yeah. Oh, it is. Man, that, that is like an earthquake when he casts a uh, shockwave. Basically, if you go, is that an Immortal? The answer is usually. The answer is yes. <laughs> yeah, like it, if it stands out that much, generally, always going to be Immortal. Dindy is going to be sandwiched a little bit here. Solo will be there to grab the bounty run, and Suneko down at bottom grabs the illusion. So, uh, to start things off, take a look at the CS. Mag is doing, or excuse me, the Magnus played by Dindy is doing quite well. Sending a 10 and 5 runs up. He's heard of disruption somewhere, and yep. Should be, uh, I actually didn't say, okay, there was actually a disruption on the Phonic. Phonic. Phonic's still just level one, but we're trying we to go in on no one. Yep, no one in some trouble. There's going to be the TP forced out. So Neko's actually a little slow getting out of there. Solo, though, he didn't have disruption. It was on cooldown. Yeah, he used to top earlier to harass the clock. I don't really, or I'm sorry, not the clock, the Nyx. I, I really don't think he needed to. And if he had disruption there, that's a first, or, well, a second blood for Vega. <laughs> 
Uh, not the biggest deal in the world, they, they still keep their Shadow Fiend alive. Even though Shadow Fiend's a bit behind, he's, he's going to catch up at some point as we see Mag being harassed a bit bottom lane. They still have Glimpse available though, Aaron. This is a little bit dangerous. Mag knows if he just tries to run, he's getting Glimpse back into a Rocket Barrage potentially, but he drives the Disruptor away and then uses the Fog to get out. And because he's got the Food Sedge, that gives him enough opportunity to get out of Glimpse range. Well, talking about the battle of the solo offlaners, uh, Funnick just now found his level two. He's really continuing to struggle. That's compared to level four. Uh, for Mag, or very nearly level 4. CS is quite low, well, I mean, for, uh, for, for poor Funnick, he has zero, as a matter of fact, and a little bit, at the very least. That's a, that's a big deal. That is yeah. by far the biggest difference between the two lineups this game. Uh, looking at Na'Vi, they, they're getting a bit more farm on their, their Magnus versus the Shadow Fiend, but again, that can easily be fixed. Nyx needs levels as an offlaner, and he needs a decent amount of farm. Uh, the main thing to be is getting the bottle, Arcane Boots slash at least one of those and the Blink, but he's not going to have it at a quick pace. This is one of the reasons why in the China Qualifier we saw Clock prioritize over pretty much every offlaner because he can he's always guaranteed his experience just from being able to cog the creep wave back. Disruption on the Dindy. Bounty runes underneath. Did he get the deny? Nope. Mac manages to... Uh, looks like he's to is taking damage. Uh, Bounty rune is picked up in the meantime. Vega. Really? I mean, they need to consider what's going on here in the mid lane. The Shadow Fiend's actually losing it. Not, not completely, but he is at about, uh, call it, four-fifths of the CS, or uh, three-fourths, excuse me, of Dendi. So Dendi on his way to a quick blink, quick arcane boots, whatever else. And Max picked up a bottle of his own. Dendi's got a haste rune. He wants to make a go on mid. Here we go, moving up. Winter Wyvern there to try to help things out. And there's the Skewer on him back, but he ate a lot of damage. In the meantime, Kruger way too far forward. And Wyvern can't even help out all that much. Dindy has to use the haste instead to escape. So a bit of a botched attempt that time. And he'll, uh, yeah, he's actually got an empty bottle. So he's going to run all the way back home and TP back to mid. So not the best attempt. Really nice play by no one, though. If you just try and run, you're dead there. But he gets off two raises. I think the third one missed because Dendi kind of ran in a circle around him. But it got Dendi low enough that he couldn't stick around. So had no one done the... You know, kind of the, the less experienced play and just tried to run away. He dies, but instead salvages his own life and manages to get back to safety. So well played by him. And yeah, it is really unfortunate. Normally a haste turn in that situation is uh, all but guaranteed kill, but not in this case. Still remains one to nothing despite a few close calls. Vega remains ahead in that regard. We haven't talked at all about Vega's Leshrac, and uh, he's looking pretty good. Uh, yep. Atop the CS board, he's actually doing about 10 CS better, or I guess actually 8, as we look at it now, now 9. Then Havos, which is surprising. But he has done a better job of zoning Mag. Ah, see, as soon as I say that, he actually... Oh, no, no, you jinxed him, Aaron. Yep, now he's going to come out, there's going to be a 2 man call. He's going to get a kill on the hard style. Maybe? No! Kept alive by Soneko. And a very nice reaction that time. He actually uh, was being zoned out pretty well, but he gained some experience. Speaking of, Funnick has caught up decently well. A little over uh, halfway to level 5 now, so finally getting something working on the mix test. Yeah, that is, uh, as we already discussed, very important for this team. So, looks like there'll be a little skirmish over the bottom rune. Dendi's going to try to make a play here. Soneko has no Arctic burn. Don't think they can really do much without it. He will be allowed to walk away. But yeah, I think looking at the game and the way it's developing right now, the biggest thing for Vega is just getting level 6 on Mag. He is the, really the only hero that's going to be able to set up easy kills for the team. They have disruption into Split Earth, but that's only if you're ganking this top lane, and top lane is Nyx. So you disrupt him, he's just going to pop Carapace, and at best you, you might be able to run him down with a, a long, or rather a prolonged chase. So I would like to see Clock get active shortly after he gets level 6. They can... Even put the Dazzle bottom, as he is a very experienced, hungry support. Just try to sit back and leech a bit. And Mag is, is getting close to six. The death slows him down a little, but he already had a great start, as you pointed out correctly. And as a result, he can afford to give up that kill and still have a very tiny level six. Navi, dedicating a bit more effort now to try to zone him out. Realizing, oh, there's a glimpse back. Do they have the damage? Rocket Barrage doing the job. Oh. Couple of auto attacks. No! Uh, survives with about 50 oh, HP. Jesus, that was close. Cut it as close as you could have asked. There him. must have been a stout shield proc in there. I thought. Yeah, no, sure he definitely proc. He definitely proc one of the last two auto attacks. So, 
Little RNG, never hurt nobody, unless your name's Navi. Um, Nidney, in the meantime, is approaching level 6, so his uh, lethality should be going up considerably. So Neko continuing to remain active. He's kind of been all over the place. And he wants to scout for the Shadow Fiend stacks and, and see how much is in the jungle right now, or maybe just, f uh, oh, I guess, ward it up so that they know when they go to farm them. In fact, he's going to catch no one making this a triple stack here. He might just, I wonder if he blocks it or if he wants it to be built up and then looks for his team to steal it. Oh, Courier. Courier running right by him. One auto attack. Two auto attacks, not gonna have the damage. And able to survive with about half HP. Yeah, he used the Arctic Burn. It's a very long cooldown. It, it makes him a lot more vulnerable uh, not having that available, but he's got Dendi in tow, so he should be A okay. We've lost Dyer's oh, career, <laughs> but we'll never <laughs> forget the many people <laughs> who is going on? Solo, solo RP'd. And uh, Navi with some trickeration, and, and they're gonna get the stack as well. This is yeah. disastrous. Well, for they were Vegas. gonna get, they were gonna get the stack. That was actually really clever the way that they just kind of stayed, you know, hidden. Soneko showed himself trying to attack the courier, but there was no reaction, and then the courier just flew right back and died. So, uh, unfortunately, the wheels coming off the wagon in a very real way for Vega. All of a sudden, they lose the stack, they lose the courier, and now Navi feeling emboldened, a level six and a half dindy. Oh, that really hurts. Uh, I feel like I'm not... Oh, by the way, Sneeko, uh, I think he, he flew over the trees with Arctic Burn and got himself Someone stuck, there. maybe? <laughs> he, he's legit. He's like he's got a TP. He might be hanging out. Yeah, he's hanging out. Oh, no, I, he's I, was, not, I was thinking he's not there. Yeah, yeah. I was just wondering why he's sitting there in solo health. I guess he wants to try to steal the, uh, the remaining creeps, but he will be able to walk away. Tasha's low. Oh, uh, uh oh. Oh, that was not worth it. Nico, he's gonna try to deny himself. <laughs> not no luck. Oh, that's a freebie for Vega. I, I mean, they desperately need kills like that the way this game's developing. Well, we're coming up on 10 minutes, and it's been a long day for these teams, I'm sure. It's still a very even game despite the back and forth. And the big thing is that I think where the game's gonna turn is just looking at how the Magnus and the Clockwork are able to to play this one out. Mag does not have his level 6 yet. Dendi already has Blink and level, almost level 7. Yep. Look for him to try for a, a quick kill here on the Shadow Fiend mid. He's there with Funic. He's got... Oh, I think... No, he doesn't have the RP yet, actually. No. That's odd. No, well, oftentimes you'll see a, a Magnus player choose to hide the Blink, but I guess Vega may have suspected he has really need to get level 6 on Funic. If Funic's level 6 is Vendetta, that's a 100% sure kill down the bottom. There's going to be a disruption. Sameko again, die, back up, and about to Radio's die again. We'll go ahead and hold him brace himself. Not going to matter, as that's another freebie. Make it 3-3. Three three. Vega getting a little help. Yeah, kind of a topsy-turvy game. Nyx does hit 6, and they have Magnus Blink. So I mentioned uh, I mentioned just the mag blink, but I, I guess for Navi, those are they have they have the advantage of having two really good initiators here. So time to see if they can make plays with them. Feels like they may need to, as their supports are getting really shut down here. Kill on ledge should be a very big deal. He's very quietly farmed 2,400 gold in the bank, and they are rotating kind of in that direction. Didn't he gonna stop and take a little bit of farm on the way? Funic has used his vendetta for the first time. And yeah, Vega either, either spotted it or they uh, just have good game senses. They have completely tucked Pasha away knowing that he's a prime target right now. I think that is more game sense. The, the Dyer have one ward, but it's off near the bottom side of the map. So he's able to dodge that one. Still, Funny can hide in the trees here. Maybe able to catch this Lashrak out depending on how long Pasha's willing to hide. Now 30 seconds on Vendetta. He's getting a little help now. Oh, this so could be big for him. The art style is level six as well. They're sitting really far back. That looks like they're just gonna hang for the moment, soak some XP. Dindy was kind of walking his way up there, stopped off in the jungle. Now it's gonna be three though, as Mag is hooked up. There will be a very quick pause from art style. And would expect to see some action coming up sometime soon. But yeah, this Lesh is quietly uh, become, well, he has been for a while, actually, the most farmed hero on the map in terms of pure CS, anyway. Um, right behind him, though, is Havost, and Havost doing what Havost does. Didn't start as well as anyone would have liked, but uh, right behind the Leshrag now has continued his item development quite well. Phase Boots Aquila, as well as a Helm of the Dominator and an Ogre Club already back at the base. So and, he's, and he's already got a nice stack of Ancients here. He's got a triple, I believe, or is he actually having trouble? I think that's counting. two. Oh, uh, no. No, it's that's a, it's a triple. Yep. Okay. I'm counting the health bars because I, I can't really. The, the one wing is covering like three creeps. That <laughs> looks like he's giving a big old hug. 
Yeah, I, I love the face on the ancient black dragon. It's got like this derpy <laughs> walrus. It's like a derpy <laughs> walrus dragon, not an ancient black dragon. <laughs> we still in beta, son. You know, we beta boys. Beta boys. <laughs> Well, hopefully we'll be back underway momentarily, but uh, once again, if you're just tuning in, they really cannot give up an O2 here. Um, and, they, and if they again give up an O2 here, they're gonna be uh, fighting from the bottom up, and that's the last thing you want when you have an opportunity like this on the line, especially given, you know, just given the names and the talent and the experience, many consider them to be a favorite here in this group. Oh, they planted a sentry war top lane, Aaron. They were expecting the Nyx gank, and they're going to find it. Disruption. Soul Catcher, there's the stun. He got up the Carapace, but it's not highly leveled. Now they loot him very low. Pulse Nova's going to finish him off. They knew this was coming. However, Static Storm made sure to turn this one around. Pasha dropping low. Oh, just able to barely skate away. The Vitality Booster arriving uh, as that gank ends, so now he gets even harder to kill, but just great game sets by Vega. That's, I believe, three skirmishes in a row where they've been in position to completely turn the fights and, and come out on top. You know, and again, it comes back to little things. So, you know, it, it's such a... It's, it, it's all the little things that just add up and all these little moments. Like, uh, when that Blink Dagger was first picked up by Dindy, we saw Radiant that Forefonic was just tops. a little bit underleveled on the Nyx Assassin, didn't have Vendetta in mid. So they had to wait. Instead of be getting what would have been 100% a sure kill on the Shadow Fiend, um, they have to wait and take a shot at top. But by that time, Vega had adapted. Instead, um, you know, Nyx's first foray into really trying to make something happen with Vendetta goes from being what would have been a sure kill if he had just been a little bit more leveled to instead being a big death up at top of the Shrac, um, getting the. I'm pretty sure he got credit for that, if I'm not mistaken. No, never mind. He got the assist. But uh, either way, he's still getting a lot of farm. Oh, yeah. Bloodstone is not far away. You know, I, I I think for Navi, this is where they look at the draft and say, okay, we didn't have the best lady stage, but we drafted so that it doesn't necessarily matter. We still have our towers. We have an insanely strong team fight. Matt Stun watches BKB piercing disable, and oh, oh. Dendi gets baited mid. Whiffed it. Wah, wah, wah. Gonna be a couple of minutes before he can take his shot again. Down the bottom, we do have the solo laners up against each other just trying to get some XP, and Funic is really benefiting the most from this. He's caught up, he's now level 7, that's actually um, about half a level ahead of where Mag sits. So, um, which do you think is actually more important to the success of the composition? Is it the Nyx for Na'Vi or the Clockwork for Vega? I think the clock's more important for Vega because he's their only initiator, whereas Na'Vi have the Mag as well as the Nyx, and I would say to some extent even Disruptor can be an initiator with with Glimpse. Yeah, Shadow Demon can be. The difference is his range of initiation is extremely low. So, yeah, I would say Clock out of all of the initiators, like the he's got the most in overall importance to his team. And Mag's been quiet so far. There hasn't been a ton of pressure. I, where I see Mag really being important is more later on in the game or if Navi try to make a play aggressively. That's where Nick's, or, uh, Clock can TP in, hook, look to turn the fight, maybe dust the, the Nyx as he's retreating out. As you can see, Mag has picked one up. And they are looking to make a go on Funic. He's got to be careful here in the bottom lane. Looks like he doesn't want to get too close to the creeps. He's kind of bouncing around. And Mag not even going to throw out the uh, Rocket Flare just to try to take vision. So they're going to bide their time. I think that's the right call. In the meantime, Mega is getting a fair amount of farm on no one. He is going to have his mech up. Uh, right now, as a matter of fact, he's got the recipe and the headdress ready to head out that way. We'll be forced off the tower by his mech Look at this stack for a phone. This is ridiculous. This is one of those dogs. I don't think Vega's seen it either. They send a rocket towards top and... Dendi, his blink is disabled right now. It's disabled again, and they're bringing in more reinforcements. They're going to go for this with the clockwork. Need to be ready with the glimpse. Oh, Mag instantly brought back. They do get up the hook on art style, but he's sent all the way to bottom. That's so very well cool. played. They're going to try to continue to engage this. Meantime, Navi has just that art style very low, but they're going to be able to bring down solo. So that go right there. Our going to be there with the man burn. Seema forced to use the grave on himself. No one there uses his ult. Gets some damage done, and down goes Bunny. And folks, in the meantime, running out of Running out of health, the raises, the damage, the burst, all of that magic coming from the shadow raises as well as the lightning storm from the last. The yeah, they just have so much spam on their cores. Like they you stick really around, 
The extra raises come flying up. The Requiem what, what didn't really blow anyone up. It just kind of, you know, softened them up. The yeah, exactly. Tower is being they, attacked. It, the fight looks so good for Navi. They glimpse the clock back. The hook doesn't result in a kill. Shadow Fiend walked in to try and Requiem right damage. over here, and he immediately gets Radiant's Static Storm, so his Requiem fire. doesn't go off right away. They, on top of that, get a really nice, uh, what is it, Nyx Assassin stun yeah. off in the middle of the fight, but they just got chipped away at too much, and I think part of it is Havost did not go straight BKB, he's gone for the Dominator. If he has a BKB in that fight, that is a completely different engagement, but... Oh, Dizzy in mid, uh -oh. just caught being greedy, he will make it to the high ground, no, one auto attack would have done it, but he's able to, oh, never mind, Shadow Demon gets the bonus damage and the kill, so well played. Thought they, uh, I honestly didn't even see if they had soul catcher on it, but... Uh, it, was, it was the demonic bird yeah, finally uh, kicking in its bit there, yep. so yeah, very well played. And, well, we haven't seen a good RP. We have, actually haven't seen uh, really anything out of the RP, despite a very fast play from that he had. I mean, remember, he rushed this thing. He did not complete Arcane Boots. He had a great start in the lane, but... Having all your farm concentrated in a mag, Radiant's if he doesn't find our I mean, this is not a core, Radiant. right? It's not a Shadow Fiend in the, at least not a traditional carry type hero. You need to be making plays for the team, so. I'm a little worried for Navi. At the same time, it's like, until this team is down 15, 20k gold and being sieged, the, the type of lineup they have can just win one fight, and it's suddenly a five-man wipe and it's dip back to dead even. Good news for Navi. They clear out the ancient stack of both. I think realizing I really need my BKB before the next engagement, and he will be rather close to it. Meanwhile, we're going to see Vega smoke up. Do they want to try and go for this Roshan? It seems like maybe trying to set something up in the bottom lane. If they get a kill and it's on a key hero, they can walk into the Rosh pit and take the Aegis at this point. So Navi do have to be quite careful at this moment. Will be a smoke as Navi ready to make a run in Vega. Vega has three over here. However, this one smoke solo is hit. So, they may be able to sniff this out. Okay, never mind. Seema Smokey, the war offer, he intentionally got rid of it. This will be a three Dyer's on three. What's the attack angle going to be? So, Neko may have gotten Radiant's spotted, and here we go. Being Trying to engage in. Lock is coming. And there's going to be the glimpse back. No one able to walk out of it, though. Dizzy hits a two man RG. Well, it should be there. Defensive destruction is so well on point, but they do have to bring one down already. No one in the meantime does get the ulti off. BKB, just so oh, much damage. He's man. fighting his way through all of Vega, forcing the back. It's actually a three for two, though. Is it? They still have managed to bring down the Lestrat. While that double ult, they're not done yet. Chase continues, Aaron. There's the Shockwave. Buyback on the Winter Wyvern, and Vega going to be happy with that and just walk away. Missile will chase. I don't... They do have a Blink Skewer soon, but it's very risky to go in this far. While there was the two-hero RP, there was simultaneously also a two-hero hookshot cog. So both teams got a great initiation, except for the static sword. That was, that was a very costly whiff. If that hits a couple of heroes, Navi just crushed that fight. Shadow Demon's uh, defensive disruption was gigantic. That's what kept that fight going That's, following the Yeah, RP. absolutely. So Solo getting the job done. It looks like we're ready for round two. They're ready to lock and load and go once again. Well, they know that RP's down. They're oh, all this fun and going for the mini Ravage stun here. Oh, so here we go. Oh, did they? Actually, RP's going to And, uh, they're going to go back back in the meantime. Lock down, he's eating a lot of damage. Shadow Wave's going to try to help, but the cooldown's there, and the grave will keep him up and fight. No one down yet. And the disruption, you mentioned it, is changing the game right now, Mag. Being pursued by a homing missile, but clean it up. Is being attacked. Every fight, it's like Vega lose almost every single oh, hero. Oh, glimpse back. They got passion. Can they do anything with it? Fine, there with the follow-up impale. He's got a Bloodstone tonight. He really needs it, but they still have heals coming out. Disruption about to cool down. Navi's really want to chase down the bullet. That's a BKB. But has to be careful of the way they start. There's oh, the Blade Skewer. They keep the Shadow Demon away. No defensive disruption for you, sir. And that is a... A big kill, although oh. that instantly is going to respawn. But the hook on the Dindy, he didn't mean to do that. He's actually looking to hook Nyx Assassin and miss. Ends up hitting Dindy, ends up dying because of it. So Nami gets given a free one, and so next time dies with Shadow Rage. Now Funix, copper behind with the Demonic Purge, he's dead. Called out on point, but, oh, Vos has got to run. Ulti from, from no one, just the, practically to celebrate as Dindy's next on the list. Suddenly, Nami is down to one man, and he is limping his way back to base. Radiant so Vega, and, you know, again, that was really bizarre. I don't know if you saw it, but uh, the clock, uh, it looked like he was trying Radiant's to hook the Nyx Assassin. He missed. It went long and ended up hooking him into a very deep Magnus. So he was dead before he could really contribute much of anything. 
Yeah, that it, it didn't. It wasn't the hook he wanted, but it still works out. And, and the main reason why done. Lesh had 12 bloodstone charges, so he respawned. I think it was like five seconds. Right. He's instantly back in with all his cooldowns. Meanwhile, Havos, he doesn't have a bloodstone. He didn't die. He's got like a quarter of his health or half his health. BKB was cooling down. He got a second call down. That fight took so long, and, and still they end up coming up a bit short. And it's just, it's really the power of a, a fed Lesh early on. This hero can just completely change the game. And I, I think. The fact that he just dishes out so much damage and builds Bloodstone a lot is, is one of the reasons why we're seeing him prioritized over a lot of other carries. He just is basically able to fight 24-7, whereas these like more traditional team fight heroes like Darkopter can excel, but that is the, the one downside. Use your call down BKP at this stage of the game. If you don't have a big fight, you're basically not doing anything for about a minute. Yeah, speaking of, both teams have separated out, happy to take some farm and take a bit of a breather from each other. And I'm actually unable to... Oh, there might somebody remap the keys. I was going to say, that worthwhile and gold-wise, still a very close game. About 3,000 in both categories. So uh, Vega has built up a considerable kill lead. But um, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, it actually is in favor of them in both regards. But we've yet to see Navi really put together the big combo potential we know they have. We've seen them hit some damage. We've seen them get the job done here and there. But for the most part, we have yet to see them really put it all together. And I think... If they're able to do that, it's going to break Vegas back. But that's getting harder and harder to do whenever you have, like, BKB coming out on this Lashrak. And he is just absolutely immensely farmed. Tops on the board in net worth. He's a monster. And the big concern is, although they have a lot of BKB piercing lockdown, they have almost no BKB piercing damage right now. Right. Gyrocopter is building a Yasha. Yeah, actually, I guess with Empower, they, uh, I take that back. They have decent BKB piercing damage. But... It's not exceptional, and the other thing to suppose is BKB is already down to eight seconds, so I, pretty soon it's going to be a five-second BKB, and that's something that could really be punished by this pretty heavy magic damage track that they have. Here comes Navi, though. Straight down the middle lane. They want to push. Risky to go in against Clockwork. They've now seen the Lashrak BKB, and this may deter Navi's aggression. I don't know if you mentioned it, but there's a haste from bottled up on Dendi, and yep. this is uh, a rune that could make a big difference. There's going to be a smoke. Very aggressive out of Navi. Which way are they going to go? They're going to head south. I think they might have just seen the animation. They smoked like right here. It was close anyway. Shadow Fiend and Dazzle trying to sneak themselves a Roshan. The medallion. Somebody's got one. I thought I had one. Uh, yeah, Solo has one. Oh, but they're going to spot this one out, Aaron. They're smoking oh. in. Two smokes about to cross paths. They are spread out really well. So long as they don't come together. They're going to pull. They actually have a sentry down for every spot on it. And no one even leaves the BKB. There's going to be the call down, but the most whiffs on it. Didn't catch anyone, so that's one big ult they're not going to have at their disposal. And they're already letting out, lacking the Nyx. This Roche down to about half health. It was a DD. Oh, Good no. deny. Pavos Good deny. Really wanted that. Good deny. Solo making plays. Mag is just waiting as well. If they, if the, if Pavos runs in the river, Mag's going to hook in and cut off the rest of the team, and then Pavos is going to be left in a 1v5. I, I don't think they can actually contest us anymore. Might be with that. Blink, Skewer, oh. he's gonna fight the pickoff. Defensive disruption, keeps himself alive, wastes a little time at the very least. Doesn't matter, Both Roche should be dropping in the meantime. They're going in, they've got the RP on Dendi! Goes to Kenny, under target! And now he's gonna solo RP, no one, there's the follow-up hook. Dendi, spinning the RP to get to nothing accomplished. Behind that, the fight rages on, the most has to make a run for it as Pasha is right on his tailpipe. And it doesn't look like they're going to be able to catch him. Ends up being a three for one. And the one they got, they got for free. Like, they didn't have to engage to get that single kill. Oh, man. And they, that is... It's crippling. Crippling. <laughs> the, losing the Magnus as well as two additional heroes there when... Uh, it could have just been a one for one. The, the Nyx in exchange for the Shadow Demon. The good news was they had forced out a, a BKB charge uh, from the Lesh Track. So that's the B Lesh Track BKB. Ten seconds during the for the Shadow Demon. Still a win for Vega getting the Aegis, but it's not an undefeatable advantage they gain. This, this though, is this is a big advantage now. Getting those kills, getting the Aegis on top of it. They're gonna, Navi are going to have to just focus on playing more defensively at this yep. point. Use their the advantage of their lineup has in the Dyer's turtle situation. Farm Havos towards a late game monster type build. I think they've lost almost all of their ability to, to force large 5v5 fights, at, at least for now. I'm a little baffled by that RP from Dindy. I mean, Dindy, one of the best decision makers in the game. 
It, it, it happens, you know, he tries to run in the pit, and unfortunately, the time he was off. If they, Roche had like, if it was like two more seconds to kill Roche, he probably gets a 3 hour RP, and then Disruptor can get a Static Storm on 3 as well, but instead, they'd already gotten the Roche, they're already leaving the pit, and yeah, it, it, it did turn out to be a total train wreck for Navi in the end. Let's talk about where Radiant's we go from here. Vega, happy to go ahead and rotate, clear out of tier 1, this is probably a fight that's going to be dodged. And are they going to continue to push? I think they, they're in a good enough position. They can so long as they replicate what they did last time, which is they kept such Radiant's a good spread. Like, no matter who came in, no matter what they saw, even whenever the Knicks came in and TV was, was popped, if the temptation to just go, okay, here comes the rest of Navi, let's just Radiant's go ahead and rush in, had to be tight. tremendous. Instead, they kept an amazing split and avoided any RP. Up, oh, missed on the skewer. Oh, they really need to play like that. That That is the key for Navi here is... You might, if you can't find that, you probably just have to sacrifice the tower. There's going to be a call down. No one eating most of that damage. I, I like how Solo walks in to take the call down. He's like, yeah, whatever. I don't even mind. Wow. Waste of a glimpse there. Art style unable to get the kinetic field together. They're basically just trying to spam their abilities to, to soften Vague up and, and more importantly to to hope for like that one hero caught out of position that you can then blink skewer it and either pop the Aegis or get a free tank, but they're just not quite able to find that opening. They've got Mag in a good position over to the right. And he'll be happy to go. But Mose is a pretty prime target. Mose's mana is actually quite low right now as well. He will have called out back off cooldown in about 10 seconds. They've got two minutes remaining on the Aegis, so if they want to put it to, to use, they need to do it now. There's a preemptive weave fresh off of cooldown as well. And at some point, they just need to commit. Like, if they really want this fight, really want to get some mileage out of the Aegis, they need to go real soon. Now he's doing a, yeah, they're doing a really good job of holding this, to be honest. Vega keeps on pressing in, but they're a little afraid Radiant to overly commit because of the threat of that Blink Skewer play. And as a result, it's just taking longer. Otherwise, here we go. There Blink Skewer. Go. We'll go ahead and use the ulti, and a nice damage done. That's enough to clear them out. And they have to be able to demonic curse on Art Style. They need to be able to think they could have killed him regardless. And Found a Bose. This is the bigger kill. He's got nowhere to run. Unfortunately, uh, he's a BKB TP. <laughs> if, if, top if, if they had something else attacked. to break the, the, the TP there, that is a, a devastating pickoff. But it does force out BKB Iron. With no BKB on Gyro, I, I feel like Vega could even look for the tier 2 mid. Though the Aegis is ending soon. They're kind of low, so. Waves pushed up as well. They for, have yeah, so, so perhaps they just let it go. By the way, Fleshrack already another soul booster picked up and Jeez. well on his way to a potential top three four pick up on this one. Well, it's it's just at some point Lashrak gets to that stage of the game where he stands with five heroes whacking him. <laughs> LOL, LOL, LOL. That's the thing is they yeah they have BKB piercing stuns, but if he's got Pulse Nova active, it keeps on going. It's like a death prophet, except he's gonna be life stealing it all back. Well, and, and it's it's kind of got Radiant's that effect tower like of a satanic damage. almost. Like you yeah. just you, you walk in and you go, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna just chill. I'm gonna do my thing, and you hold on to your BKB until Radiant's you know you're about half health, and you BKB, and then you regen your health so quickly if, if things are, crump, are clumped up around you. Exactly. It's you don't want to go on it, but you can absolutely cannot do more. Oh, solo. That rocket out with disruption. Now the boss has to use BKB. They're coming in. Abos is way out front by himself, but he'll run a TP away and should be able to do so behind that. So Neko's actually got high ground. They're going to guess that happened due to cause. And damage not there. So they are able to get him home as well. Solo did end up dying um, at the end of everything else, but a relatively small kill for Na'Vi. But a kill is a kill, and they're buying some time. Abos farm, I'm not sure it's where it needs to be right now. It's he's he's doing well considering the situation, but it's getting to the point where he's going to need to be the most farmed here on the map because look at everyone else. Disruptor Wyverns starting to fall pretty far behind. Is I will miss a mix kill. Let's find the clockwork. Nice pick off for Funny, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like it's getting to that point where Navi will need a massive RP to to win engagements. They're you look at Vega. They have two really fat cores. They have disruption and basically two great defensive supports. Disruption, Grave, Heal. If you only RP one core, even if you kill them, that's not really enough. You have to get both. Uh, either with the, like a Blink Skewer on one and RP on another, or RP one and then you Static Storm, Nick Stun, Burst another. 
Yeah, it's just going to be very difficult to find those openings with uh, such a strong defensive lineup, but Dendi will find Pasha. BKB does manage to catch two, but they have the damage Pasha to adjust fine. That's going to be a negative. Yep, the most is not there. <laughs> Abos trying to get away and will be able to do so. Heard a glimpse. Didn't hear who it was. Art style will be disrupted out of his TP. A little bit of miscommunication. Not that it's going to matter Final tremendously. Right. He just disappeared. <laughs> like, he literally, like, I, I, he disappeared as soon as, as soon as he came out of that. Yeah, he got soul catchered. I think it was one tick of Pulse Nova <laughs> and one raise, and he was just <laughs> dead, like deleted from the game. <laughs> that was really funny. Well, 21 to 12. And this is beginning to look. I mean, most again, it, it's not his fault. He is relatively well farmed, but the fall off from there is just so tremendous. And, and I'm, I'm not sure. The one thing I'm really not sure about is this Sanjay Yasha, but I feel like the way the game's going, he needs to be. Sanjay Yasha is great, I feel, when you're playing from ahead with Gyrocopter. Right. If you want that extra move speed, it, it does help you stay in range for Rocket Barrage. Uh, it, it's kind of a, an easy build up, so you can just keep on fighting constantly instead of having to wait to farm a bigger item like a Butterfly or maybe a Scotty, but. The way the game's developing, Havos really needs like that satanic MKB type of item, itemization, or satanic Daedalus, perhaps, something like that. And He did get a Yasha, but I feel like he already had it when the game was kind of close. But I think you just, you, obviously it's not like the Yasha was bad necessarily, but to sit on the Yasha, get something a little bit bigger that makes you more of the, the mega carry. Well, at this point, you know, the, the damage is done as far as the item build. He's just going to have to find his farm from here. And, I think that makes it tough is losing that, that tier 1 and tier 2 mid and top, there's very little control over the Radiant Ancients, and if they try to stack, the Vega might just swoop in and steal that stack for themselves. Oh, yeah. Vega basically has a run of the map, and a big part of that is because Pasha is so fat, he's got a gravitational field. He's got <laughs> 16 Bloodstone charges, he's got his BKB, even though it's he's been active with it, he still has at least 7 seconds on it. Off Dream Core is done. He is just absolutely massive at this point, and I don't know how they begin to deal with it. I mean, he's just way too overleveled. Now they have a Scotty done on no one as well, so he's just continuing to farm up. Roche these, is going to be back up soon. These carries aren't going to die. No, they're just not. I, I mean, uh, the only way that they burst them is if they get off RP and Winter's Curse on at least one of them, ideally both. And again, you've got this, you've got a Shadow Demon, you've yep. got Grave. Grave has extremely long range when it's maxed, and uh, at this point it is. Plus, I, mean, I think there's a four staff or a blink on Solo. Yeah, four staff on him. So, I mean, good luck. But they, they, they just they have to outplay Vega at this point. It's the stage of the game where they need to fight pickoffs with Dendi, farm Havost. If they could go for the high ground siege, they need that blink skewer play. Maybe they start start off with like a glimpse, like glimpse into blink skewer, but ultimately they have to pull a core oh. out of position so that they can't be grave. Pasha just got disrupted. caught. Do they have any help? Nope. Pasha was trying to TP away and actually got caught in mana burn. Mana burn, by the way, does a significant amount of damage to him. It it, it really does. That's one of their biggest damage dealing spells. Uh, of course, there's still a, a seven second BKB, but if it's down, then. Yeah, that's probably their best tool for, for trying to kill it. Four staff done on the Nyx Assassin. The itemization on Dyer's Navi slow, but not non-existent. Nope, that's not a word. Non-existent. Um, Vega is going to go ahead and smoke. And I'm pretty sure... Dyer's yeah, that's Navi with the fire. little satyr in the Roche pit. They, they check and they see Roche is up. There is a Mind Stealer there, and they're going to go ahead and immediately kill it. And they're going to go for it. They are. Navi is way spread out. They do not have an outer tier tower. This should be a free roof. This is absolutely free. If Navi leave the base and contest this and they lose a fight at the pit, uh, presumably they're going to use RP, right? Yeah. Probably called on as well. Probably Gyro BKB. Vega go and, and just take two racks, top as well as mid. So I, I don't think Navi should even consider contesting this. They're way too far behind. They're also very reliant on that big long cooldown ultimate, which is where it's super risky to go for that play. But this now means Vega may try to break the base. Well, one thing that is worth mentioning, despite how many kills Vega has piled up, despite how how farmed their cores are, if you take a look at the gold and net worth graphs, Navi has actually been slowly eating away at the lead. 
I'm not saying that's going to win it for him. I'm not <laughs> saying this is going to be a three-hour game and they're somehow going to get that back to even that way. But it is nice to know that they have not been continually losing ground. It is, still it is impressive how close they've kept it. Yeah. So if they can win one, two fights, if Vega makes one, two big mistakes, suddenly get a ball game again. Radiance bottom uh, They need that five. one fight. I, again, it, it starts Tires with the blink skewer. If they find it, damage. anything's possible. If they can't, I think it's almost impossible to kill Radiance either of these fortified. And tier two, Radiance last out of tier tower under remaining fire. for Navi. They cliff it. Radiance bottom and down it goes. Demolished. Vega are feeling Let's strong look though. Look Here they go. Four heroes pushing in bottom. It's Tyler's top, middle top of the city mid. He wants to cancel Havos TP Tyler's when he tries to TP back. Four. This could be massive. Got man. it! Oh, such a big play. And Havos has to try to walk back home down at bottom. Tier three under siege. And Navi, there's going to be an RP. They don't have a boast. There's a defensive disruption. And the kinetic field static storm is there. There's the grave, though. Impale going to catch a couple, but there's no damage. No way to follow. Navi on the run. Have to head back to the fountain. And Havos is still walking back towards the base. He's got MKB gold arrow, but by the time he gets here, Rags are gone. Oh, what a disaster. And what an amazing play by Max. Single-handedly secures the full weight of Rags. Yep. And not just the, you know, that's the kind of thing where, I mean, just the awareness to be like, hey, we're in a position to push. You, you know, Havos is greedy. He's going to farm as many creeps as he can. You have time. Get into position. Make it happen. And then hitting the clutch shot. They damage. only did get the melee racks, range racks still stand, but I mean, the ability for Navi to get onto the other side of the map now is going to be so non-existent, and the, to be honest, we've reached a point where yes, Empower and Flat Cannon are nice, but you're talking a Shadow Fiend and a Lesh Rack that are absolutely gigantic. MKB be damned. I mean, that's going to help a ton, and it certainly gives them a little bit more potential to, to take that big fight they still need. But, I mean, just look at this team. No one with the Demon Edge, 2,500 gold on top of the BKB mech, and the Scotty, and on the other side, uh, Leftrap, who has added a Sheevas Guard to his inventory as well. So, not only does he have Match Community, not only does he have 17, uh, 17 Bloodstone Charges and an Octarine Core to reach in, he has armor now. So, I mean, just tremendous play out of Vega. It's going to be really hard to hold this next push. The, the biggest issue is they did not crack the Aegis in, in the last fight, which means Vega still have extra lives. They have uh, so many saves. The Aegis is the big one. The, the TP is the big one. So that's one small piece of good news, but he'll respawn it so he can just rush out mid. Disruption, of course, the Grave. The Shadow Fiend has a mech av uh, available. Both BKBs are up. This is the last stand. Navi absolutely must get a big pick or they will lose two way Oh, well, no one. Needing a fair amount of damage for free out front. And like you said, the initiation potential on both sides is hook. Mag with the hook. Dindy looking to make something happen with a blink skewer or a blink RP. Let's see how Vega want to play it. Are they going to pull back? Yeah, they may, they may decide to play it a little bit safer here. They've got, let's see, about a minute and a half on the Aegis. Maybe they want to go mid instead. And the other thing is no one has his next item now. He's got 3,300 gold. I'm curious if he wants to complete a, an MKB here. Is he going Daedalus? Uh, or is he just going to hold on to his gold for now and maybe save for a potential buyback if needed? Just walking back towards the base. Um, is he thinking Rapier? Is he going for it there? Uh, they want to know. Is this a rapier? Nice it was. If doing? he farms these ancients, he would pretty much have the gold for it. I, I want to believe. <laughs> I don't think it is a rapier, but it, it would be nice. Havost, maybe. Maybe eventually. Don't think no one's going in that direction. It's more just like he almost had the gold for it. Nah. He had not bought the MKB. He walks to the side. Secret shop. It's like, come on, man. Do it, do it for the viewers. Think of the fans. He went crit stick. Uh, yeah, Crystal is on the way out here right now. Everyone report this guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course. This is this is TF1. You do what you gotta do, man. Well, they're gonna slowly rotate back towards bottom. And they got a double wave heading in. They are spread out, so they're not gonna be able to utilize that to the fullest. Looks like they'll get a free range rex here. The free close. One more catapult shot. Oh, no. Still alive. Aegis is gone. One more creep. Give it a smack. Oh, no. They're pulling them back. Range Rex saved! 14 HP. <laughs> Just deny it. Do it. Do it, guys. I, I, do you feel like that was the right call? Like, I feel like Vega basically gave away an Aegis for nothing. Oh, you mean as far as not forcing the issue? Yeah. Mm, 
I, I think they still go really late. Like, as much as... I would, I would favor Navi if they get a good initiation, but only if they get one. If they, we've seen Dendi struggle to find amazing RPs this game. He's gotten two, two man. I think like two man RPs have been the best. Maybe there was one three man RP, but that, it, they also haven't got converted into kills. So that's where I feel like Navi's lineup, the execution is always going to be the challenge for them. And so I think Vega have more room to grow here. No one can replace the mech. I would say he can also get like a satanic at some point. There's no AA in this game, so it's a, a really nice pickup. The team of the Slayers got his BKB on Dazzle nearly. That's a pretty big item. Um, other than that, Clock Eggs should be done soon. And uh, I mean, the Lesh getting Boots of Travel That's too. That's big, yeah. So yeah, I think they've, I, I would say the next stage, this is where they should really be looking to, to get two lanes of Rax and end the game. And they should have it fairly soon. Now for now, Nami continuing to play defensive, so Neko trying to be cute. Flying through the woods, and they know he's there, but it doesn't look like they want to over pursue. Disruptor, in the meantime, has picked up a scepter of his own. The downside to not pushing, though, is that they have now the Disruptor Egg and the Refresher Mag, which they yeah. did not have before. So, you do bring up a good point that it's kind of. It is giving Navi that chance to claw their way back in the game. Havost also got his first damage item earlier. Now he's got 2800 gold. Soon he's going to have a Satanic, so. It does get a bit trickier here for Vega. There's always that risk, like no matter how late it gets. RP up three or four yep. with flat cannon on a gyrocopter, your whole team's dead. Well, I feel like the refreshers really, that's the item more so than any other on the map right now that has a chance to blow the game to the side of it. You know, we haven't seen that, that earth shattering RP or even on the good RPs we have seen, we just haven't seen the follow up. But if you're able to catch lightning in a bottle, if you're able to get Two, you know, able to get one of the two two major cores, or maybe even both of them, plus a support, and you catch it before BKBs are deployed, and so on and so on. Suddenly, that's eight seconds you're going to have uh, to try to bring them down. The most now has the damage for that. Daz, I mean, we didn't even really talk about this. We talked about the combo potential of Shadow Demon and Dazzle, but these two heroes, just so far as keeping people alive and keeping each other alive, is a big deal as well. Uh, being able, you know, if they engage on a Shadow Demon, being able to Grave him, if they engage on a Dazzle, he can disrupt. Even just the Weave. Weave yep. versus yep. Gyro with the power is so crucial. Having all that plus armor is... It's the main damage that Navi have later on in this game. They're, they don't have a massive, magical damage type carry. Later on, cooldowns just kind of eh. Right. You know, it's not really that much for heroes that have 2,500 health on Shadow Fiend. He's going to have a Satanic, the, the Lashrak running around 2,500 as well, so... That's where, I mean, you bring up a really good point that Dazzle is just devastatingly good against this type of physical damage heavy lineup. Yep. Well, for now, Vega continues to wait it out. Roshan, back up in uh, about a minute or two. So, for now, just looks to be a farming game for both sides. And unfortunately for Na'Vi, as good as we, as much as we were bragging on them for keeping it close, that's no longer the case, as we can see. The difference in net worth and and uh, overall experience has begun to tank down. So um, even though they have been given some time to make up a little bit of ground and itemize a little bit uh, more deeply into their development, it's still a tough road to hoe. As we can see, Havos is really the only one anywhere near where he needs to be, um, and he's sitting right on the on the on the tail of the Shadow Fiend and the Leshrac, but. I mean, at some point, it's got to become a rapier game. Like, you're not going to be able to get that damage out against these heroes the more they tank up, unless you're willing to take the gamble. The problem is, there's just so much he needs in front of him. Wow. <laughs> uh, I would love to see one, but I, I don't think you get it quite. No. Da Daedalus will probably be the next item. I'd say Daedalus Satanic, and then maybe as your last item, you, you consider a rapier. He's right. Boots of Traveler may need to come into the mix, like if they've lost the second lane of Rax, he may have to spend a lot of time pushing lanes out, but here we go. Navi, I think they realize that Vega get the next Aegis, they're almost certainly getting a second lane of Rax. So they smoke, Ooh. but Vega are anticipating this. Yeah. Who's gonna get the initiation on its way out front? He's gonna be able to use Echo. Jeez, crit it down immediately, it looks off the mark. But it doesn't matter. Nami's got to run for the hills. They've got an excellent clock. Oh. They're going to have another hook. Buyback. And the hook did come out. Unable to follow up with it, though. Oh, no. He's got it now. This is the second uh, too late. They, he, he, he jumped in with the cogs with the four staff. Then they glimpse him back. But uh, he had that second hook pulled down just like three, four seconds. Too late. Okay. They force out the buyback.
Well, they forced out the buyback, but it did cost no one another BKB charge. And BKB, if they... Roche is going to be back up. If they linger, that's just unfortunate timing. If they linger just another 10 seconds of that, uh, they're going to see the big guy jump back up. And they're going to continue to hang in the vicinity. Yep, he's up now. Solo going to check it. It's towards the max respawn, which is where both teams are very likely to just stick around the pit. But yep. And they also should be, they should rock it if they're not sure. We'll, we'll see if they go for it. Right now, they're they're more worried about keeping tabs on the Navi heroes than they are on Roche. Roche is not going anywhere. Navi could come from anywhere. Pasha. Heads on into the pit. Phonix thinking about making a move here as well. He's up perched on the high ground. They start to see some heroes walk in, and he is in his currently. He saw the move in oh, Denny. SRP only got one. Oh, beautiful disrupt. Oh, RP is back up if he wants it. He's up on the high ground trying to get out of dodge. Pasha there, helped out by Mag, and connects with the hook. So Neko saved. I mean, we had two amazing saves, one on each side that time. Unfortunately, top tower still is comes out in favor of Vega as they go three for two. What a disruption from Solo to keep uh, uh, to keep the Shadow uh, Shadow Fiend alive, allowing him to actually engage on his own terms. But a very beautiful play from the winner, uh, Wyvern, as well, using the cold embrace to keep them both alive and next to no else. Yeah, great saves on both sides. Unfortunately, right before uh, they, because they blink skewered towards the end of that fight, Pavos was almost dead. He got cold embrace. Then they tried to blink skewer the Latrak away from him so Dendi could save Pavos. Unfortunately, Latrak had thrown a stun out with hit the ground right before that, so he ends up dying anyway. And, and that's the same for Vega. They have two heroes that can carry, that can just win fights for the team, Alatrek and the Shadow Fiend. Whereas Na'Vi, they only have Gyrocopter. The rest of these heroes are all about setting up for him, and he, like you said, just a great disruption. That's really what made the fight. If he gets, say, the Shadow Demon and the Shadow Fiend and gets the Skewer out of the pit, yep. I think Na'Vi actually wins that fight. Well, it's but really good positioning, too, because Solo was hanging way, way back in the pit, like as far as he possibly could be. Yeah, and Denny was expecting, like, the more traditional, like, Kind of two or three arrows just clumped up on top of road, just, you know, wailing away at him. But right. wasn't the case. Just not needed. They, they still have the potential, but it's getting to that point where so many things have to go wrong for Vega and everything has to go right for Na'Vi. And I won't say it's insurmountable with this draft, but it's it's getting close. I don't know how they kill Lesh once and learn twice. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't know He's how He's actually so big. He's got... Look at his mono region. Yeah. 113 mono oh, he's regen. Got a, he's got a region. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, he, I think he still has like 50 plus. He oh, yeah. the regen right though. No, it's like, I mean, 21 stacks on his bloodstone. Even if he, like, okay, so they're going to have to kill him three times, essentially, because he, he's going to die once and lose the ages. He's going to die twice and respawn immediately off of 21 bloodstone charges and, and then teleport back in. And then they got to kill him a third time. I don't know how. I at, really at, don't. At some point, he also gets a refresher orb, and that means he's got double BKB. Double Shiva's, and, you know, of course, all his other spells basically have no cooldown. Well, he's going to go down and take a little bit more farm. Yeah, if, if you're bigger right now, you push in all the lanes, get the equilibrium going your way, uh, and they have the boots of travel to make it easy, and then they look for their second lane of ranks. This will give Dendi a chance for his refresher to cool down, but I, I still feel this is, this is the Aegis and Cheese with which you want to fully break the base. Yep. Very close to unkillable. Shrek gets another ultimate orb. Well, an ultimate orb, I should say. I think he's looking for a hex here. Should have one relatively soon. Here we go. Ready to go high ground. Let's see if Navi's got the goods. The Man, does so much damage. It's, it's really their <laughs> only other damage besides Chakra. Like, oh, hang on. There's going to be a glimpse back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, hang on. Here comes it. Manages to catch up Funny. Helped up on the winner. No, he actually got pushed down by the cause of the low ground. Fun against so much trouble. Pulls that back to the high ground. The BKBs are out of most. Already down to half health. His BKB is off, as is no one's. There's a disruption once again from Solo that'll keep Pasha out of the line of fire. Now might be the time. I think it's much worse for a to be lacking his BKB than it is for base. Uh, for no one, excuse me. There's going to be a solo RP. They're going to skewer it back. He has the refresh. No one can skewer it even further back. He uses the cheese now. Able to bring it down, but no. Oh, beautiful 
Hargrave once again, three man cogs, and Vega has Nalby on the run once again. They do get the Shadow Demon, but they lost the most in the process. Buybacks on both you and the Disruptors. A boast of art style ready to come back out. But Paco still has all. Oh, oh, get me out of here. He's got the grave and the heel. That should be fine. Ah, uh, there's a well shot splitter. There's going to be a glimpse. No, oh, you beat him. He dodged it. Very nicely dodged. This rocket's still following Mag. It's going to hurt. Oh, why didn't you just stay near the. He could have just stayed near the Shadow uh, shadow Priest so he could grave him. Not sure. So alone. Barely able to make it away. So even though they hold ground, they did not get the Aegis. And more importantly, it cost them two buybacks. So Navi's got to make something happen. Radiant's middle tower very, very is good. taking damage. Well, they hold, but it was an expensive hold. But just, especially Havost having to buy back extremely costly. He needs that Satanic Daedalus. Again, something I mentioned in the draft, which I think is really showing right now, is how good Shadow, or, uh, Shadow Demon. God, there's so many shadows in this game. Shadow <laughs> Fiend, Shadow Priest, Shadow Demon. It's the Shadow Strat. But uh, yeah, Shadow Demon's purge is just so good against Gyro because of his slow attack range. He gets purge and he just can't actually do anything compared to the Shadow Beast. He's got a full 600 range to work with to easily harass heroes back to the distance. They hold, but uh, this next hold is going to be the really tough one. And Vega happy to go ahead and reset. Think they'll win on another Aegis? I don't know about another Aegis. That, I think you want to go while Havos doesn't have buyback. I think what they wait for is just for everyone to respawn, get all the lanes pushed out again, and then just at least gently siege the base. Because they still they still have the Aegis on the Lashrac. Um, there was the Shadow Fiend who died in the last fight. So yeah. I think you go with this one. You've got... Well, actually, this one's about to expire. I think you still go. I don't think you wait for the next one, but we'll see. They could look to play it safe. They are they are starting to get that play. It's like there's not actually that many more to buy. Lashrac is X. Refresh. He's six slotted. Yeah, he's 6-slotted, he can have a refresher in the stash. So when he respawns, he can get a new DKB and a new X. But that's really about it. Four minute respawn on Roshan, so if they want to wait, it'll be kind of a short one. And, oh, they're going to five man at least. And once again, they're just so gigantic. And Havos, like, Havos damage output, I mean, it's not what they want it to be. And that's one problem, but the biggest problem is he just is getting lit up by... Uh, by no one in particular, like you said, between the Demonic Purge and the Scotty, he just can't move. He can't do any uh, that's true. I, I mentioned the Purge, but yeah, it's also the fact that stacking with the Scotty slow, which yep. is just so hard to get anything done. This Hex is big, though. If Havos gets Hexed, as many good defensive supports as Vega has, Navi has nothing, really. The Glimpse won't help against these BKBs, and oh, I guess they have... They oh, oh, no, this could be it. This oh. Hex could win the game. There it is. There's the hook. All good for staff. Manages to get him out. And they're going to try to follow this up. I'm not so sure they're going to catch him. There's going to be an RP once again. Oh, he missed the skewer. Now, the fight's going to continue to rage. But not wrong. But the miss on the RP. They need the second RP. And the two. They're going to get both the Shadow Fiend going down as well as the Shadow oh, Demon. Man. Little Shrek also dying, but he's going to be coming back here in just a couple of seconds with that Bloodstone. Excellent hold, though, in the end. They get both cores, they kill off the Shadow Demon, they lose nobody. Aaron, that's the 7,000 gold swing that Navi have been waiting for. It just takes one good RP. The first one wasn't even good, <laughs> that was awful. but that's what the refresher is for. <laughs> and they missed the skewer as well. Oh my, that quick thank you there by Denny. He had the four step out of the box ready almost instantly. If they get a rage for the hex, they're able to follow that up, they just lose the fight. Because remember, if Havos dies and it's not with like all of Vega already dead, they probably lose the game because Havos has no buyback available for three full minutes. And at this point, maybe you do wait for the rush. I think Vega are gonna think twice after that. Fight. Yeah, for sure. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you who came through that time. Um, like you, like you mentioned, the four staff was so on point and saved the game for sure. Art style. I, let's be honest. His his kinetic fields and his static storms have been a little shaky this game. That time it was right where it needed to be. Um, Vega hung around way too long. They should have disengaged whenever things didn't go their way. Uh, they tried to be real sneaky, trying to smoke into the uh, the lane without racks. Then they just hung around and they got. I mean, that was the RP. He didn't need to get three or four. He just needed to get when it needed to be the right two, and it definitely was. So, uh, like you said, was, yep, uh, that's gigantic. Look at the gold graphs and the gold next to graphs. Like, the swing is real. <laughs> One more fight and it's going to be almost an even game. Yep. If it goes that way. And that was only three kills. It wasn't even, it's not like they team wiped them or anything. Right. They got the cores, and that's what counts. 
And Lesh lost a fair amount of Bloodstone charges. Lost six with that death, by the way. Clockwork does have a BKB of his own that is now done. Roshan shouldn't be too far off. Yeah, about 60 seconds on the money. Is, I mean, if you're Vega, now you have to feel like you got the wind knocked out of you a little bit. Other than getting the Aegis, other than just waiting out a Roshan and hoping that if there is a Roche fight, you prevail. Do you change your approach or you just say, okay, you know what, that didn't work that time. A few mistakes were made, let's, let's shore it up, or do you look to take a different approach in terms of trying to crack high ground? Hmm. I think they just need to make absolutely sure that their supports are not getting caught. In that fight, they they ended up getting solo caught in the static storm, and then he got RP'd after that, which is why he couldn't disrupt anybody, and that's basically why they ended up losing the fight. So, I, ideally, I think at this stage of the game, you really want to blink dagger on solo. Then you can sit super far back on the Shadow Demon, whereas right now he's only got the four staff. But I, I think ultimately, at some point, you're going to have to take a risk where you push in all the lanes, you go high ground, and there is a, always a slight chance, if you're slightly out of position, that they, they do get a multiple here RP skewer and, and could turn the fight from there. So, other big thing is being quicker on the BKBs if you're Lesh or Shadow Fiend. If he RPs you, but you're BKB, then he can't skewer you back. And if he's not skewering you back, you're, they're not going to find that kind of engagement. So, um, that, again, that's where later on this game, having the refresher on Lashrak just for the BKB refresh is really important. So that if he dies, he can buy back, refresh the BKB, uh, and he has it for the second life. But, I mean, well, for now, Vega going to take the road. Well, another Aegis and Cheese, and I, I still think they really don't you just gotta have a better engagement, basically all. Ideally, you start with Mag. Mag gets a jump, and then you find the enemy Magnus. And you find Magnus. <laughs> and, then, and then it gets a little bit easier from there. Oh, we really haven't seen, and you know, again, it's a small point that we brought up during the draft, but Ma if Mag could hit a rocket flare onto Dindy at the right time and put his blink down, I guess he still has four staff, so it's not as big of a deal. But the uh, refresher is ready to go once again. And they're going to need a big play out of him. He's but got 5k gold, by the way. Yeah. I'm not sure if there's a really big item that Dendi could buy at this point. BKB probably is, but if he buys a BKB, he will not have 5 items. So he's deciding not to do it for right now. They're both farming this out. The damage really beginning to show itself considerably. If it's been high all game, he's critting for about 1,100. I'm pretty sure that I just saw. Of course, not exact. Oh, wow. I just heard a glimpse. And I don't think it did anything. Glimpse Mag back a little bit. Maybe where he was lining up a hook shot. Still on the defensive. Mega trying to find a way in. Yeah, the slow, steady seeds. They, they don't really want to commit their heroes up to high ground yet. They're waiting for a good initiate. Now, you can't... Oh, there's a scepter on the Nyx, by the way. Yep, he's underground, right between the racks. That's actually so amazing. Yep. But the, don't leave the base, Nami. Then you can't use this next to his, his full stick set. By the way, look at the range of that impale. Yep. Oh my goodness, that's just insane. Oh, uh, yeah, he actually jumped up just as I was. <laughs> the... Lager. This is incredible. Oh, RP! Got two! That's no one here passing into the structure, but no one passing but anyone caught out. Here comes Mag. Beautiful Ray Pasha does not have to He's not going to see the maximum in the pit, though and pass it down as well. He's down for 35 seconds. They got the Disruptor. No one's still alive, does have the Aegis. And Solon's actually gonna be caught up. He's gonna be forced to use his Ghost Hunter trying to stay alive. The buybacks are coming. They really want to turn this wall. TP bottom is the Shadow Demon. They're fighting without him, and they're trying to break the base right now. This is a dangerous move by Vega. Could have costing them, but it's where it can seem on the backside. Oh, oh no, this could be a dump. The double skewer back to the tier four. Masha may fall here. A bow's trying to finish the job. He's regaining some of the after he's, They get him. He's dead for 70 seconds. That is a really long time by Lashrak. Let's go to standard. Now, no one may get caught. Jenny, unfortunately, is currently I lacking a skewer. He does have an RP. Dead. He's thinking about it. They have not cracked these racks. Vega, you got to back. There it is. Beautiful play! The bubble up is there, disruption from Solo, gonna be enough. No one comes out, still has the Aegis, still doing damage. They're able to kite it out, the folks gonna be careful. They're doing such a good job kiting him out, slowly but surely. Aegis is gonna be popped. Funnick is in position to re-engage immediately. Actually mistimed him. 
and that will allow him to escape with his life. What a holes play, Tanabe. That was absolutely sensational. The lurker Knicks man doing work there towards the <laughs> really that, that was mostly about the WMP, but it, it, it's fun to see that, that, that item in action. That lurker Knicks, 24 to 29. And suddenly a game that we thought, I think most of us would have thought, it was reaching towards its final moments. We're at 60 minutes in. The gold graph has, I mean, not completely turned upside down, but damn well close enough. 15K gold swing at about the last 10 to 12 minutes, and the experience is damn near even. I want to point out, there's a refresher on the Wyvern now. So they have double Winter's Curse, oh, man. as well as double RP, and the double Skewer. <laughs> oh, this is scary. Uh, Dendi played that fight so well, though. He gets the first two here, RP. One of them gets disrupted. The other ends up getting picked off. And then he does the double skewer back to finish off the, uh, the Lashrak after he bought back, which he went from, I think he had, what, 21 Bloodstone charges? Now he's down to six. Yep. That means he actually would need his buyback. The next time he dies, he's going to need his buyback, most likely. Yeah, he bought he does back, again. too. Yeah, he already bought back, so his buyback's on cooldown for five straight minutes. Yeah, that, that, was, that was just such great double tier after the buyback, completely opening this game up. And now I think if you're Vega, you start to just worry a little bit psychologically. Like, how do we break the base? We thought we had them, but every time we go in now, Dendi finds two. Ooh, there's the skewer back. They, they have no way to... Prevent that play aside from a disruption. Disrupt one, and that's where, in that case, again, Vega getting both fours caught together. That that's something that has to be avoided. And that's something worth saying. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't. Well, no. I guess there's no way. The decision to disrupt they, uh, no one as opposed to Pasha whenever that initial RP he, hit. Yeah, he did have the Aegis, so maybe you want to disrupt the Lesh. They're also on top of each other, so right. it's one of those like maybe he's trying to click on Lesh but couldn't, or just misclick. I guess I, w I would agree with Lee slightly towards disrupting that one, but it still would have been a tough fight for Vega. Immediately, like, Shadow Fiend pulled all the way back, and uh, they were also a little incisive. They fought back Redway and Lesh, and then they sort of backed off, even as his TP, and he, he went in before his team and got caught a bit out of position. It was just a very chaotic fight in general. These things happen in Dota. <laughs> Once in a while. Well, for the second time in as many series, Navi finds themselves in an hour-long marathon game two. And just like last time, they have a chance to close it out 2-0 and really solidify their position and pop their group. Solo is in no man's land. That play. And he's going to be found out behind that. There was a hook to come in and mag DKB. What was the plan here? There was just mag and solo. I guess they didn't think all of Navi was there. They're lucky they got away without both of them being dead. It's not often you see a BKB at a 10 second duration at 63 minutes in. Yeah. He's only just picked this up. And 27 uh, hunter gold still in the bank. Oh, Funnick is hunting. This could be big on Tasha trying to pull something out here. And well, I guess he did. Forces out the BKB. Not sure if he was down to five seconds already. Nah, but it is now. If he was sitting at six. I'm pretty sure he was down a while ago. I think Funk is going Octarine as well. This, this could be very interesting with how much damage the Monoburn's doing. Navi holding it together against all odds. Last hits are pretty absurd, by the way. We've got about 1,500 collected things across the, actually more than that, across the top three. Net worth, of course, we've got two, well over the 30k mark now. Shadow Fiend is not far away from that mark as well. Still a few things that could be replaced, I suppose. He's got a Demon Edge, and what a match he's going to go. I mean, he's got a Demon Edge, what do you think he's going to pick up next? Mm. At this point, do you consider a Rapier? I, I, that feels, like, I, I against think the Gyro? Yeah, I mean, Gyro could still go Butterfly, so I think you have to go MKB here. Yeah, it's kind of like, I mean... I'm just, like, at this point, it, it's... I feel like Vega had... Uh, you hate to be a Monday morning quarterback and, and be like, well, okay, it's, it's really easy to see maybe something different. There was a time when they got very passive and decided to not Niles really touch the issue with an agent. Yeah, they got one lane of Rex and then they did back to farm. Yep, and I wonder if they're not picking themselves Here's now. the smoke, though. Vega looking to make their move bottom. Can they find the opening? Sonico's here with the Winter's Curse in the tree line. Well, but the oh, hook good. starts hook. it off. Hook on a hard style. He's going to be in some trouble. Goes in, gets two. 
He's gone. There's going to be another hook. And suddenly Vega, who had to have felt just an awful feeling in the pit of their stomach. They get Navi outside of their base, and now it's not so big of a problem. There's the Hex Solos there. Triple kill for Pacha. That's four down. Who's got buyback? Not going to be it. Never mind. The Gyro does have buyback indeed. That in and of itself is a pretty big deal. Outside of that, they do have Dindy, they do have Funic. There will be no art style, there will be no Winter Wyvern. I don't know if these two can hold it by themselves. You you have one RP, you have a Gyro who has one damage item to say tank. I, honestly, I think Vega just keep on going here. The yep, Lestrax, they have to. Lestrax buyback is cooled down as well, so he can afford to take this risk. Vega at this point, they're in position to close out Navi and tie this up, make it a one-to-one -one series. The Lurker next off to Mark with the first stun. Now he's gonna reset a bit. Solo trying to catch him out. He burrows under. Monobird comes through, but Vega just looking for no, actually not looking Let's for Solo. But probably should be there. Should lose the rain tracks any moment. Solo getting done. Great, no timing. Mag back in. Catches the both for the damage. They don't have anyone there doing damage. No one has to burrow to get his targets. Need by the most. Chasing Mag back out of the base. They do manage to bring down both sets of racks. That in and of itself makes this worthwhile. A both kid that catches from behind. There's going to be an RP. RP, but Dindy just cannot stand the pain as no one is giving them the slaps and making them cry all the way back to the fountain. A double kill for him. Then <laughs> Funic almost became a triple kill after the races. He actually finds an MVP out of the enemy's base. Wyvern does catch him, but no disruption once again. And oh, oh there's the grave! What are you gonna do? You can't kill him! Unbelievable, these graves, the disruptions, Navi have to be beyond frustrated at this point. That was a dieback on Dendi, and the vote forced to buy back, although he did not die again. I think if you're Vega now, you go heal, and then you go top. You know that there's no buyback at this point on the, the Magnus or the Gyrocopter for yep. five and a half minutes, and if you kill one, the game's over. Gotta check the Rose Pit. And they may just wait for sound. No one, I mean, he's got a Satanic, so he can certainly go to work. Speaking of go to work, he got the job done. And I can, I'm calling her right now. Uh, my, not done, my MVP for the game solo. Solo's disruption tab. Hey, hey. This guy has a history, man. Oh, wait, know. wait until they've won to call it. But yeah, if they win and with the way he's played, I would fully agree. I mean, uh, <laughs> MVP, win, lose, or draw. He has been so impactful in this game. He really has. Well, I guess if they lose, he's probably been the MVP for Navi. So either, <laughs> either way, at this point, Solo's the MVP. Okay, I I'm with you, man. All right, Roche down and out uh, in a hurry. Aegis actually goes on a clock on the Aegis. And then it's going to be there's, Dazzle. There's just no room on the Shadow Fiend. Rapier. The track at this point. Havost. Me and Havost. Just Havost things. Rapier I, bot on the way to. I mean, why not? At this point, this is the only way to be for Anything else, like a butterfly is not really going to help you. Shadow Fiend already has MKB. You have to kill the enemy supports. Ideally, at least one core in your BKB, or you're losing the fight. It's a risky item, but it's uh, an absolutely necessary one at this stage. But bear in mind, and even should Navi win the fight, there are four out of five buybacks up on Vega. So Navi need to win probably two fights to turn this game. Adam. And uh, Lashrak is getting the refresher now. This is a seven-slotted Lashrak. Six, he's getting a, a tier four item every every ten minutes, which is not the most farmed any hero's ever been, but it's damn close considering the amount of fighting. 36,000 net worth on this Lashrak. I just saw a crit for 1,700. That's legit. That's not even the Lashrak. Yep. <laughs> Imagine if you could crit with your nukes. No. Oh. That would be so dirty. Maybe a patch in the future. I remember when they said there, there was no way there'd be CDR in Duna. And that's definitely changed. Here we are. Vega ready to try and pull the upset here in game two. They drop game one. It's going to be an RP! Best RP of the game! Brings him back into the static score. The follow-up is finally there for Nob. Oh my god! He got the second one! That's the corner! The rapier is going at four dead! They want no one as long! They're going to find him, dude! That shadow beats down! And five heroes in! Through the age of the look at him! Bring back down another time! Look at him as well! Oh. 
Disney so caps it with the best RPs we've seen all game. Caps it with a double kill of his own. Buybacks are up, and what an unmitigated catastrophe for this Vegas squad. Practically on a victory march, they run a headlong into a uh -oh. dendy RP, followed by... This, this is trouble, though, Aaron. Oh, the sting they, of a they, they, they have no RPs, and Vega bought back four of five heroes. They may end up losing this game anyway, but here we go again. <laughs> oh my god. He, he, wish, he, he wishes he could buy another RP at this point. He can't, and Vega, they're marching. <laughs> Dude, the panic that Vega has to be feeling right now. Here we go, Monik's there. Oh, he got Hex! Monik Hex down, Sonoko's right there. If he can be up a low one, the Vega's trying to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe. can't do it. Rapier or not, no one is gigantic. Monik comes back out, he actually bounces into the car. Knocked down to the low ground. In the meantime, didn't he able to force that back to safety? Connect field is there. But can they get past you? BKB's out of it. Oh, they got him! The crit! It's a dieback! They might actually got the Havos is just going to town! That Ranger and Dandy with the skimmer on the bag! Got it! Oh, good hook! Is it? Havos is waiting for this. He's gonna look for no one instead. This is a dieback! On the shadow feed as well, a double dieback on the fours. You run the hell down mid and you do it now, but the throne is under siege. It's about down to a third HP. Someone's gotta try and hold this off. If Navi wins this game, oh my god. A hundred seconds we got down. I don't know if they could actually push though. They have a, they have a serious siege. infestation of creeps on their hands. <laughs> I, I, all of them are actually leaving her both back. So yeah, they're not even gonna try. He, he can BOT it though. He's he got can't. BOTs, they have to make sure the creep doesn't die. My goodness, my word. Oh, my word. Oh, my lanta. They have their good friends, I word. They have 80 seconds with no shadow feed. That is. I, I really feel like Vega needs both forces. Like, one of them is, especially the left. The left does not match up as well 1v1 against the Jarrah. He's much better just kind of cleaning everyone up. And here, Navi come down mid. This is a lot of this is up to the clockwork. Mag has to stall this push as long as possible. Did they just go straight throne? I think you go throne. Yeah, I think so too. You kill this. It seems like they're debating it. They're kind of moving forward. Maybe they just want to get the safe Rax trade. They're going to cave in mid. Still 50 seconds. 50 seconds is such a long time. I think they're realizing that they can just go for it. Here we go. Onto the tier fours. This is where it gets really interesting. And power Raker. Now they're going to have to. They're going to blow the cliff. And there's going to be a hook in. Matt coming in to make something happen. Stack still top point. Can't do anything. It's going to be a skewer out by BKB Dindy. The meantime, trying skewers one back. RP on the back. A beautiful grave once again, though. It's going to allow him to buy some more time. Disruption's there. The most comes out of it. Do they have the damage? Will it be a rapier on the ground? No. Five from there. Able to bail him out at least momentarily. One tier four is down. Art Style's about to drop. The damage just not there yet. They got 10 seconds. 10 seconds to try to do as much damage as they can. But they're probably going to want to bail out. So they go for the throw. They're looking for it. Funix here. Zoning everyone back. The lurker in the front line. So those rocks are dead. Gets disrupted for now. But I don't have to control them. They want the heal bomb to come through. Now the shadow. Oh! Rapier down. Rapier's on the ground. He's got buyback. Everybody buys back. It's Navi's turn to throw bodies at Rax. Here we go. Round two. Fight. Let's see if they've got the goods. That's a full team buyback. Dindy up, does not have an RP, does have a refresh. He's able to get back. No one's caught out! That's the RP after the refresh! No one is down! I cannot believe it. Navi has snatched victory from the jaws of the beat while halfway down the throne. And they take the series. Where the zero? What the hell was that? What a game! <sighs> what a game! That is a that is a one in a million. And they they already had one of these games earlier today in their last series. What a <laughs> what an absolute what an absolute dream day for Navi. I uh, they could have easily ended up two and four today in yeah, games. Play. Easily, a very think how they started their day with a, with a, a, a remarkable loss, like a, a loss that like had Reddit threads going up, like being like, oh my god, you know, look at these guys, Navi's Navi's dead, this that and the other. Then they go 2-0 in the in these last two series in the most dramatic fashion you could have possibly possibly asked for, and he, <laughs> I don't even. Know. I, there are no words, man. Yeah. <laughs> Just, you guys saw it. There's the scoreboard. You figure it out as uh, 21 and 5.